The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of around the OA, across the OAA, um, one of the hosts of Between Terminas, and last week, Brain Cells on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud, and also those watching on Oriented with Television as well. We got a lot to look at this week, obviously. Um, a lot of news around the OA has um, really um, went down this past week. Obviously, the um, the the um, shocking him stepped down at Clarkston, obviously, with Kurt Richardson stepped down. Uh, Roy Oaks got a new football coach, and we're going to talk basketball district previews as well. Obviously, um, the um, boys' districts, are, um, the bracket has been set up, but the girls' side has, um, but the girls' side has, um, the brackets have been released there. So a lot to look at this week here on the pod. Um, let's look at our main story. We're going to go from, we're going to go to football, obviously. That's the big story. Um, when you really look at Clarkston, um, you know, when you really look at, of course, Clarkston, um, Kurt Rich has been there a long time. I mean, I'm 35 right years old right now, and he's been there since 1987. Um, calling it a career after um, winning um, the 16th winningest coach in, in school history, in state history. Um, obviously, when you look at Clarkston, um, you got to look at, what Kurt Richardson's done over there at Clarkson. Um, 274 wins and 98 losses. That is the um, 16th most winningest wins all time. Um, you know, he was 35 years. He won four Division One state final appearances and three Division One state titles. Um, that really says a lot. I mean, that really, really says a lot over there at Clarkson with what um he's done over there. Um. When you really look at the Wolves, I mean, like, you know, last year, this year, I mean, this last year, of course, they were upset by Oxford in the first round. Um, very unusual for them to go out that early in the first round. Um, but what KR has done over there, Clarkson has been completely legendary. Um, you know, a lot, you know, he's, he's coached some great kids there. He's at Clarkson, obviously three state titles. The four um, state finals appearances, um, all of that, you know, really, really was the one that, you know, that says a lot with Coach Richardson's character. Um, um, also, um, on the sidelines, then, you know, I mean, like, um, he's he did, he's done a very nice job. I mean, like over there, at Clarkson. I mean, like he was the staple of Clarkson football, the legend of Clarkson football. Um, you know, and for him to go on his own terms, he deserved to go on his own terms. So when you really look at, when you really look at what Kurt Richardson's done over there at Clarkson, um, you know, a lot of great things. I mean, like there wasn't a lot of down years over there at Clarkson either. I mean, I mean, he's been very, very successful. You know, you got to put him up there with the likes of Alfred Casa or, um, John Harrington, um, Bud Riley. Um, he definitely is up there on that, um, coaching legendary pedestal in Oakland County. There's not, not, no doubt there. Um, so when you look at Clarkston, obviously, um, you got to look at now what Clarkston, um, you know, um, Kurt Richardson said a very interesting comment to Scott Bernstein. Um, he said that, you know, the cupboard is it's full there. You know, there are a lot of questions though when you look at Clarkson heading into um next season. I mean, there's a lot of questions. Obviously you have Garrett Dillinger and Ethan Clark um both coming back. Likely John Call is gonna like be your quarterback um for Clarkston. You got Desmond Steffens there. Um you got obviously Kevin Audet Dighton there coming back. Um you know, there are some pieces over there. You know, for a new coach to come in there and say, you know, um, you know, and build on and program strength at Clarkson's not a question. Um, their eighth grade class is very good coming up. So when you really look at Clarkson, I mean, like the cupboard is pretty much it's full there. So 
lot of questions when you look at Clarkson. A lot of questions. Um, but they got playmakers. They're going to have players there that are going to be there. Um, obviously, when you look at Clarkston, um, the first guy you got to look at, obviously, is Gary Call. And, you know, Call, of course, is the um, principal Clarkson. I know his um, family's got connections. Could he be a possible replacement for Coach Richardson? And that is a possibility, you know. He, I mean, like, I think that would make, it would make a very interesting debate, you know, with Clarkston to see where they go. I mean, Clarkston is one of the most premier jobs within the state of Michigan. I mean, because you got a, it's one community. You got, you got a lot of kids to go to look at, you know, you know, the draw on, obviously. And I think, you know, for whoever the new coach is, is going to have a very nice, nice, um, nice, um, position because, you know, you got a, I mean, like, obviously when you look at Clarkson, obviously the talent pool's there. Um, now I'm curious to see how the changes are going to be because not only just Richardson, Richardson stepped down, but there were three other assistants that also stepped down. So you got to wonder with Clarkson is the, how is the offense going to change? How is the defense going to change? I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to change with Clarkson, obviously, because of, you know, the, I mean, like, and who knows if they go outside the box. I mean, there is a name out there in Clint Alexander who just led Grand Blank, who has one of the most biggest enrolled schools um, in the, what, in the entire state, to the state um, semifinals last year. Um. Could he be a possibility? Um, that is a possibility. I mean, I, I just don't know what direction um, athletic director Jeff Cozen is going to go in regards to the football program. Because, you know, he could go in-house. I mean, if he goes in-house, you know, I mean, that, 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 would, be, that would be very, very helpful for the players and off, and off of the system. Because when you really look at Clarkston, I mean, like, you know, there are some more than capable candidates within house he can go with. But if you're going outside the box, you know, you know, then you're going to think about, okay, I'm going to have to build up. You're basically starting over if you're going outside the box. So I'm curious to see how Clarkston um, handles this. I'm really curious to see how they handle this. Um, if they go in house, they don't go in house. I mean, like that's something to really, really keep a close eye on. Um, when you look at Clarkston, um, basically with them is you got to have somebody in there that can keep everything, you know, sustaining at a high level. And with Clarkston, I don't know if, um, I mean, like they, they do, they, I mean, there, there are some candidates in there that can definitely, you know, you know, that can definitely like, um, could they go within the Clarkson alumni? That is another possibility because you really look at it, you know, you know, Kurt, 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 Kurt Richardson is really, you know, there's a lot of alums that played for him, you know, who knows? I mean, could a Clarkson alum go in there and, you know, take over the program? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, so I'm very curious to see where, this coaching shirt is going to be for Clarkston. Um, how things are going to be post Kurt Richardson over there at Clarkston. Um, who takes over the program? Um, not only will they have to, you know, not only deal with the varsity program, but deal with the sub varsities, the freshman and junior varsity, the middle school programs. I know Clarkston's got, um, you know, you got Clarkson Junior High and Sasha Bob Middle over there. And then you have the youth programs. I know Clarkson's got three youth football programs there. Um, a blue, a gold, and I think a white team is there. So, so really, really with Clarkson, I mean, like, you're not only just being the head coach for the varsity program, but also for the entire football program community as a whole. So that's something to really, really look at, um, you know, for whoever the new guy is going to be over there at Clarkson. So, 
that is something to really keep an eye on. Um, that is a coaching job to keep a close eye on, to watch over there. That's something to really, really keep a close eye on. So we'll see what happens. I mean, Clarkson has a lot coming back. Obviously, when you look at Ethan Clark, you look at um, Garrett Dillinger, you got Desmond Seppens, Kevin Aldighton, Brody Cozen. Um, you know, they got pieces. So that's something to really watch. But new quarterback like me, John Call. So we'll see what happens going forward there with that one. Um, okay, now let's go from Clarkson to Royal Oak. Um, Royal Oak named the new head coach, um, Dustin Truett. Um, takes over the gig over there at Royal Oak. Um, he takes, Dustin Truett, he takes over for Ray McMahon, obviously. Um, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, like, this is a program that, you know, has been 9-24 and 24 since 2017. That is not good at all. I mean, you know, and I know um, Truett's a PE teacher at Royal Oak Middle School. He coached at Royal Oak Middle School. Um does have some coaching experience at Farmington and Livonia, um, Clarenceville. Um, so, and I read, I read the press release from Royal Oak, um, Royal Oak Schools on this. Um, I know he says some things really interesting that has me, um, I'm curious to see. Um, he said, quote, I'm honored to be the head football coach at Royal Oak. I'm excited to lead a community and a school district that has such passion for football. I'm fortunate for the opportunity, and I can't wait to get to work. Um, and then also, you know, um, looking at Royal Oak, obviously, I mean, you know, there's going to be major challenges for this program. I mean, you look at, there's some pros and there's some cons about this. I mean, going from middle school to high school football is a challenge. It is not easy. Um, and there are some questions. Program strength is a big time concern for Royal Oak. I mean, program strength is a big, big concern. They got to replace some, they got to replace some wide receivers, obviously. I mean, yes, you have your quarterback in, um, Hudson Seidel and running back Michael, Mikai Jenkins coming back. Those are some good pieces to build around. But when you have to replace pass catchers, that could be a problem. Um, other, other comments that I thought was really interesting was we're going to work endlessly to build a program that makes our students, faculty, and community proud, a team of highly character individuals who are enthusiastic about the game of football and viable leaders within our school community. I mean, he says the right things. I mean, I mean, he's saying the right things. I mean, he's, he's saying the right things and, you know, and. But here's here's my problem with that. You know, you can you can do all that. You know, you can I mean like you can like um you can build a program that makes students, um, faculty and um everybody proud, the community proud, but when you're not producing results, I'm looking at nine and twenty four since the on seventeen. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you know, that, you know, that tells me that, you know, you're doing everything, everything right off the field. But when you're on the field, something's amiss. And I know you're in a division with Berkeley and Ferndale. Um, Ferndale, of course, um, you know, Berkeley, of course, last season haven't had a really good year under Coach Sean Shields. Um, Ferndale, we know how good they can be under Coach Eric Royal. Um, but when you really look at it at, at um at um you're in a produce results league and you know in the OAA is a produce results league that's really the bottom line here you know as you got to produce results i mean like you know i said this a couple years ago with Sophie Arts and Tech i mean you know the OAA is a produce results league you know you can do all the things right in the community. You can do everything right, you know, but you got to produce results. And I know that for the community, what's in, more important, you know, important is you got, you got education schools, you know what I mean? That's very important, but also you got to have a, you got to have a, your football program's got to be winning and Royal Oak hasn't done that. And 
I don't know if it's the competition that they're facing or if it's, you know, but when you're not producing results, bad things happen. And when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, obviously, Coach Ray McMahon's done a really nice job of that program. He did a really nice job of that program. But when you but when you look at the record overall, I mean, like, you know, that's something to really look at. I mean, Truett's got a challenge ahead of him. He's got a challenge ahead of him. Now, what helps is the kids that played at Royal Oak Middle School going up to Royal Oak High School, they know him. They know him, you know? So that helps. That really helps. Um, but he's going to have to really, he's going to have to do some things much different, though, than McMahon did over there. Um. When you're in a produce results league, you know, you got to produce results. I mean, there's really no ins and outs about it. You know, so I look at interesting, you know what I mean? Like, I'm looking at from the press release also, um, Royal Oak Interim Athletic Director, um, you know, Brian Gordon, very nice guy. Know him very well. Um... He said, quote, we're extremely excited about the new addition to Coach Justin Truett to the, our Raven family. As an educator in our district, he brings an enormous amount of energy and experience where, in, where he truly understands how impactful educational athletics is to school culture. Coach Truett's a person of high integrity, where he puts the needs of all students in the royal community first. He's a great addition to our athletic staff, and we look forward to working with him in every capacity. Like I said, I mean, like, it, it, it's a, it, I mean, like, you know, when you look at it here, I mean, like, to me, to me, like, everything, everything, like, um, it's for me, I got to see the product on the field. You know what I mean? I got to see the product on the field. You know, everything off the field, you know, you know, they say the right things. They, they say the right things, they do the right things. I mean, like, you know. But it's just the problem that I have with this hire is, you know, you got to look at your record on the field. You know, that's where I, I have concerns with the true hire. I mean, when you're going from middle school to high school football, it's a very, it's a very challenging um, transition. Um, but when you look at, when you look at the record, when you look at the record, I mean, like, um, you know, nine and twenty-four. You know what I mean. I know he's gonna say to the kids, you know, we're starting fresh, the clean slate. You know, we're, we're it's a whole new administration. It's a clean slate. But when you're looking at your division and you're in the blue and you're in the gold division, where you're gonna be seeing a team like Berkeley, we know what they went through under Coach Sean Shields last two years. Berkeley's played beautiful, great football. They played great football. Ferndale, we know that they've been under Coach Eric Royal. I mean, you know, they've got some athletes in, in there, you know, and they've, they've played some really good football, you know. So when you look at your two arch rivals and you're looking at your two arch rivals and, and you're saying, like, how can I get that success? How can I get the success? That is going to be the challenge for Coach Truett. Um, that's the big time challenge. Um, and then you look at the rest of the division. You got Avondale, Avondale, an improving team under coach Corey Bell. You look at Pontiac, um, Ken Wade's done a nice job with that program, despite, you know, last year's, um, win loss record, but he's putting something over there at Pontiac. Um, so when you really look at it here, Royal Oak's going to have their hands full. They're going to have their hands full. And that schedule they have this year is not going to be easy either. I mean, you're going up against, um, you open up the year week one against Holly on the road. Holly's got a new football coach in Billy Keenest. Um, of course, Keenest knows the OA very well from his days at Berkeley and Troy Athens. Um, so it's a difficult matchup for um for um, Royal Oak going out there to Holly um, week one. I mean, Holly, I think, is going to be a very much improved football team in the Flint Metro this year. I mean, like, the Royal Oak's going to have their hands full. I mean, really are. And then you're looking at their other other games in the schedule they got to play. Um, 
obviously their arch rivals, Berkeley Ferndale, um, Avondale, and Pontiac. Um, those are not going to be easy games for them. And then they got to play. Um, and then they got to play. Um, you know, they they have to play Troy Athens, Troy, and Farmington. Um, Truett, of course, obviously does have some Farmington connections. Um, and then you have to play Troy Athens. Of course, Troy Athens, I think, is going to be very improved. Um, they ha they don't have a new coach as of yet. I've been hearing rumors going around them. Um, and then you look at Troy. Of course, Troy was a team that made the postseason last year. Um, they do lose a lot, though, which is, you know, going to be really interesting to see how Troy does. Um, and then they got to close out the were Madison Heights Lamphere. And that's a very difficult matchup for them going up against the Rams. I mean, so when you really look at the schedule for um, for Truett, I think it's going to be the schedule is very, very daunting. I mean, it really, really looks daunting. And when I look at the early indications right now, um, I, I don't know if I see Royal Oak either possibly winning one or maybe not even winning the game with that schedule. I don't know. I mean, but when I look at that schedule, I'm terrified when I look at that schedule because because when you really look at it here, um, Truett's going to have his hands full. That's the bottom line. You can do all the things out of the community, you know what I mean? But you're in a produce results league, and you have to produce results. So I'm curious to see the challenge that Truett's going to have at Royal Oak. Really, really curious. Um, but, you know, like I said, like, I've been proven wrong before, I mean, with Royal Oak. I mean, last year in the previous show, I didn't think Royal Oak would win a game. When they knocked off Ferndale, I got blasted on Twitter. And rightfully so. Um, so, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see if Truett does something different. We'll see if he, um, we'll see if, um, we'll see if Roy Oak changes things up a little bit. I, I really think it, it's going to be very interesting. But when I look at that, when I look at the gold division right now, um, Roy Oak to me, I still think Berkeley and Roy Ferndale are the cream of the crop in that division. Um, then you have, um, Avondale as a, as a wild card in that one, in that division. Pontiac, you know, they're getting better. Um, Davian Hall is a player to really watch for them next year. Um, and then you have Royal Oak, obviously, you know, Makai Jenkins, Hudson Saito. There's some pieces to work with, but they got some concerns, especially at wide receiver. Um, in the secondary, defense, depth's a big concern. Program strength's a big concern. I mean, there's just a lot of concerns with Royal Oak. There's just, there's just a lot of concerns. You know, so that's something to really, really keep a close eye on when you look at when you look at Royal Oak. I mean, you know, so we'll see what happens with them. Okay, now I'm gonna go from football here. Um, we're gonna go to um basketball here. A lot of basketball storylines um occurring. Um, the districts have been released for um girls basketball. The matchups have been released. Um, we're gonna preview those um coming up. The boys bracket has been released as well. Um, when you really look at the brackets, I mean, like some of them have got some really interesting matchups. So we're going to preview the districts. They start next week. Um, we're going to go over from, we're going to go girls as they were released. Um, we're going to go from districts from high, from the highest one to the lowest one. So 60s goes first, then it's district four is at the very end. So here's my, here are the matchups. Obviously we're going to go district 60. Um, this was going to be taking place at Harper Woods. Um, you got Detroit Denby versus Detroit Osborne. Um, that winner's taking on the top seed in the district, which is St. Clair Shore, South Lake. Um, then you have East Point versus Harper Woods, Chandler Park Academy. Um, that winner's taking on Harper Woods. Um, because all these games are being played Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, of next week. So want to let you let. Let everybody know ahead of time how that's going to work. Um, when I look at this this district, obviously, you know, I was really surprised St. Clair Shore South Lake um, was ranked pretty high the way they were. Um, despite, um, you know, they have wins over Mount Clemens, Kloss and Hantramic. Mount Clemens, very good um, this year. Um, their losses were to um, Blitzfield, Clawson, and Marine City. 
all with a very high NPR. Um, Harper Woods, we know they've been what they've been. They're fifteen and one right now, sixteen and one right now. Um, big one looming with Sea Home on Thursday. Um, but I really think the wild card is Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. I mean, people look at you know this was a program last year that you know did some did they won a district last year. So I'm curious to see how they're gonna match up, especially. They should get by East Point, um, but then that match with Harper Woods would be very interesting. Um, that's a rivalry game, um, so I'm curious to see how that that one goes. And then the other one to keep an eye on is um, Detroit Denby. I mean, Detroit Denby, same position as Harper Woods, um, Chandler Park Academy. Um, you know, they could get St. Clair Shore, South Lakes in trouble. I mean, I'm curious to see how that district goes. Um, if everything, when you look at that district, if it should be a St. Clair Shore, South Lake, St. Clair Shore, South Lake versus Harper Woods district final. Well, I'm curious to see how that's going to go. Um, we'll see there. Um, I, I really think the Cavs have, they played a tougher schedule. Um, Harper Woods' non-conference really worries me um, in this matchup. So Right now, if I had to predict a district champion right now, I would have to say it's St. Clair Shore South Lake that will move on in that district. Um, district number 58, this will be at Birmingham Detroit Country Day. You got um, you got Ferndale versus Ferndale University, and then you have um, Detroit Jalen Rose Leadership Academy taking on Detroit Country Day. Um, Country Day, of course, is the top seed. Ferndale University is the number two seed. Um, Ferndale's... It, Ferndale's been having a really rough year. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I know they're trying to rebuild the program under Coach Al Catala. Um, it's been a, it's been a challenge for them. Um, it's been really difficult, but you know they're starting to figure some things out a little bit. Um, university, obviously, they're having a nice year, um, but their league record's been very, very odd in the Blue this year. It was, it's been really odd. Um, middle of the pack in the division. Um, I thought they'd be better than what they were. Um, maybe even challenge for the title, but they've had some tough losses. Um, so when I look at university, you know, they got a shot. But when you look at on the other side, you got Detroit Country Day there. Um, you know, that's going to be a tough task. I mean, Country Day has been a weird team all year to figure out. It, they've been a very weird team. They got experience. I know they got Final Four aspirations this year. Um, I think they could be a Final Four team this year um, in Division Two. We'll see. I mean, they got the talent to get there. I mean, but until otherwise, I I, I can't. There's nobody in this district I would touch. Maybe Country Day is probably going to be the team that I think wins this district. Home court, star power, everything. I mean. They got it. You know, they got, I mean, they got it. You know what I mean? And that matters. Um, so I just think Detroit Country Day, they're going to move on in this district. Um, they're going to move on. So we'll see what happens there in that, um, in that district over there at um, Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, district number 50, uh, 29 at Troy. You got Troy Athens versus Warren Mott. That winner's taking on Troy. And then you have Warren Wistar versus Warren Cousineau. Um, when I look at this district and you look at Troy, you know, and you got to look at the last three years, they have not gotten out of their first game. And that is something I know that this senior class has talked about frequently all year long is can we win this district? You have experience. You have three very good players on this team. You have Alyssa Mantuza who just came back from injury. You have Charlotte Savoca. And then you have Kendall Zyder. You know, you have three players, you know, that been through it all, seen the experiences, have been through the ups and downs. You played in the red this year. Um, you have everything made out for you. But you get the number two seed in your district. I mean, Warren Cousineau, they're not a bad team. I mean, I mean, but their best win was early in the season. Their best win was over Trenton, and that was early. Everybody else who they lost to 
have had an NPR of over 560 and higher. That says a lot. Really does. But then now you got to look at your district and say, okay, if you're Troy, you're basically looking at a, a rematch with Troy Athens in the next round. Depending if they get by Warren Mott, which they should. Um, then you have a very interesting matchup here be between you got um, Jillian Siak going against Alyssa Mantuza. You got Kendall Zider. You got Charles Savoka. This is a very interesting matchup if Troy and Troy Athens were to rematch in the district semifinal. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Troy Athens beat Troy by two earlier in the season. That says a lot. But now Mantuza's back. And, you know, that says something there. Warren Cousineau on the other side, they got Warren Woods Tower. They should beat Warren Woods Tower. I mean, for Troy, for Troy, it's, it's now or never for them. It's now or never. Because if Troy, if Troy wins this district, you know, that's going to that's gonna be good. That's huge for them. Home court, win the district. You know, you got everything you want there. You got everything you need. Everything you want. But if you don't win it, I don't know what to say to you. I really don't know what to say. Because you've had three years of this. You've had, you had two years you were the top seed in your district, and you lost in the first game. Now, yes, Utica was a good team. And then last year, you had a bye, and you played Rochester. Lost a tough one. Now, I get that a couple players were out because of COVID, but it's now or never for Troy because you look at that program, you know, you, I mean, especially the senior class. I mean, like, you got to win this district if you're Troy. You got to. You got to put everything on the line in this district. And I know Coach Julius Porter knows that, but... Bottom line is this, you know, I can't think of what happens if they don't win the district. But if they do win the district, you know, then keep the ride going. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like, we'll see what happens with Troy. I mean, but I've said this all year with Troy. It's now or never for them. So we'll see what happens. I mean, but I know you got Troy Athens and then you have Warren Cousino likely dealing if you're Troy. So. We'll see. We will see. Um, district 28, this is going to be an interesting district. Groves versus Seaholm. That winner's taking on West Bloomfield. And then you have Bloomfield Hills versus North Farmington. That winner's taking on Birmingham Marion. Um, West Bloomfield. They just knocked off Detroit Edison. I mean, that says a lot when you knock off Detroit Edison. You're the first team to give them their first loss in, st in state competition in four years. That says a lot. You have, you have four, you have five very good players. Both Davis sisters, both Hendrick sisters, and Myana Hooper. The bench is a question mark for me. It's, it's been that way all year long for Coach Jerry McAllister. It's been that way. Now you have Birmingham Marion on the other side of you, who just won the Catholic League postseason tournament. You have Mary Cicerone is stepping down at the end of the year. And you got a Birmingham Marion team that's getting healthy at the right time and just found and just had their best one of the best players in Mackenzie Swanson come back. So that tells me, you know, Birmingham Marion, they're getting ready for a postseason run. They're gonna be inspired. They're gonna be motivated. Cause it's Cicerone's last year. It's also, you know, you know they're going to be playing, playing hard, playing hearts out. They're going to be playing because they want to keep this ride going. If you're West Bloomfield, last year you didn't have a postseason tournament because of COVID. Now you got to make, you are now a proven state title contender because you just beat Detroit Edison. That says a lot. And then you look at, obviously, you got Groves and Seaholm. That's an interesting matchup in the first round. Um, rematch at Little Seas from, because they played at Little Seas Arena. That's a rematch. So I'm curious to see how that one goes. Um, I think Seaholm is in a much better place right now than Groves is. I really do. I mean, I mean, Groves didn't look very good against um, 
West Bloomfield. See home, we know they've been playing pretty well. So, and they're in the blue race with Harper Woods. So, I'm curious to see how that, that rematch is going to go. Then on the other side, if you're North Farmington, you better be aware of Bloom Bay Hills. And I'm telling you why. Because I really like the, I really like what Coach Kristen Massey's done with that team. Ashley Fortner's a very good player. Um, they got others as well. Um, I, I really, if you're North Farmington, I mean, like, I know, yes, you got two very good players in Sal Leffler and on Penelope Query. Um, but you haven't played in a couple, you haven't played in a couple weeks. So I'm very concerned if you're Coach Jeff Simpson. Um, you've been a, and the last time he played Bloomfield Hills, he only won by six. That says something there. Bloomfield Hills is getting better. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Bloomfield Hills upsets North Farmington. It really wouldn't surprise me. And, you know, so if I'm North Farmington, I'm on upset alert. Um, but when you look at the possibility of a West Bloomfield, Birmingham, Marion District final, I know a lot of media will be there. Um, and that's going to be a really interesting matchup considering that West Bloomfield has got the speed while Birmingham, Marion has the size. So. I'm going to be curious to see how that match goes um, if those two teams were to play. Now, is it possible that one of the teams could be upset? Absolutely. I mean, there's not a question there. But in all reality, you know, I, everything looks to be a West Bloomby, Birmingham, Marion um, district final, you know, and there's a lot of motivations um, on both sides. Um, and I mentioned that earlier. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's go now from District 28 to District 27. This one is at, um, Farmington Hills Mercy. You got Farmington taking on Redford Thurston. Um, that winner's taking on Livonia Stevenson. Um, and then you have A&T taking on Farmington Hills Mercy. Um, uh, for A&T, this is a very tough matchup for you. I mean, going up against the Marlins, um, we know that they are a very good team. Um, you've been, you've either been, A&T's been on the, either the up end of a blow or the down end of a blowout. I mean, that's really what, um, you know, that's been the Warriors season all year long. I know they got a young team, but still, I mean, you know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be, you know, it, you got a tough task ahead of you. I mean, going against the Gary Morris team, um, you know, I mean, like, of course they have a very good player, Maya White. Um, it's going to be a tough task for A&T in that one. But a team I think that could make the district final is Farmington. I mean, Farmington has got a lot to play for. I mean, Autumn Barrett is a very good player um, for Farmington. I know um, I'd like to send my hearts and condolences to um, Farmington's. Um, I know Farmington had a um, loss in, within their program. Um, my hearts and um, prayers are with um, the Farmington community at this time. Um. But Farmington's got a great chance to get the district final. I mean, you really look at, they match up well with for Thurston. Um, and I think they match up well with Lavonia Stevenson. Lavonia Stevenson's best win was against Groves. I mean, so when you really look at Lavonia Stevenson, I think when you look at Farmington's path, I mean, they can do some damage. Um, so if you're Lavonia Stevenson, if you're the Spartans, you're on upset alert. I mean, I really like the way Farmington's been playing lately. I mean, playing loose basketball, nothing to lose. Um, you obviously got your your team is starting to gel. That's a good sign for Coach Laura Guzman and her team. That is a really good sign. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if Farmington and Farmington Hills Mercy play each other in the district final. It really wouldn't surprise me. Um, do I think Farmington's got enough to get to win the district? Probably not, because I think Farmfield's Mercy's got too much talent. But I think they're going to give him a run. I really do. Um, we'll see what happens there in that one. I mean, I, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great opportunity for Farmington to do some damage in this district. It, it is. It's a great opportunity for them to do some damage. Um, let's, go, let's go from District 27 to District 26. Um, you got, we got um, Oak Park versus Detroit Mumford. 
Um, this will be taken by the Detroit Renaissance. Um, Oak Park versus Detroit Mumford. That winner's taking on Berkeley, and then Royal Oak versus Detroit Renaissance. Um, Detroit Renaissance is the top seed in this district. Um, Berkeley has the number two seed. Um, Detroit Renaissance, they are a legit state title contender. Um, the Phoenix's five losses this year were to teams that have an NPR 621 or higher. Um, they have played a tough schedule. I know Coach Shane Law very well. Um, they got a very, very talented team. Um, so when we look at, there's, there's a good reason why Detroit Renaissance is the favorite in their district. Um, but I think Berkeley could give them some problems. I mean, when you look at, yes, the Bears, despite them having lost three straight games to very good competition, um, you got to look at Berkeley and say, well, we have a star player in Ashley Loon. You know, we went to the district final last year. We ran into a team last year that was very similar to Detroit Renaissance and Groves that year. But you got to look at, obviously, it's a different district, different season. <laughs> um, you got to look at, obviously, um, with Loon, Ashley Loon can take over a game by herself and push you 30 points a night. She can do that. Um, and then you have... Um, then you have others like Sammy Withrow. Malve Nolan's having a nice year. Um, you have um, Jillian Gomes and Maya Jones in the interior. I mean, they could get Detroit Renaissance problems. They could. Um, I just feel bad for Royal Oak, though, because Royal Oak, I mean, young team, ha have had a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of bumps in the road. Um, you know, I mean, like, but they got to play Detroit Renaissance. That's a very difficult matchup for Coach Brian Sapon and his team. That's a really difficult matchup. Um, I am curious to see how Detroit Mumper does in this district, considering that they should beat Oak Park. Um, but that winner's taking on Berkeley. And imagine a Detroit Renaissance Berkeley matchup. That could be really interesting. I mean, yes, Detroit Renaissance would have what uh, Detroit Mumper would have the um, like the familiarity playing at Detroit, playing in the Detroit Public School League, um, knowing that gym. Um, but Berkeley, we know they got I, Berkeley. We know with Ashley Loon, um, how she can take over a game by herself, more than capable of doing that. Um, I I just think Berkeley's got enough to get to the district final, um, and meet Detroit Renaissance. But like I said, um, Berkeley's going to run into the same problem that they ran into last year with Groves. Um, Groves is, sorry, um, Berkeley's just, I mean, like Detroit Renaissance is too much talented, too talented. Um, you know, especially with who they played, they played a tougher schedule. Um, I, 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 Bears have had a nice year. They've had a nice year. Um, I think they're going to get the district final, but I think at the end of the day, um, Detroit Renaissance, too much. Home court, star power. I mean, we'll see what happens there, but it's going to be too much. So that's my thoughts in that district over there at um, Detroit Renaissance. Um, let's go to District 6 now. This is going to be a district at Waterford Kettering. You got Avenue versus Pontiac, um, and that winner's taking on um, Waterford Kettering. And then you have Waterford Mott versus Clarkston. Clarkson, obviously, the top seed in the district. Um, Waterford Mott, it's just, it, it's just so tough for Coach Michelle Scar. I mean, last year, it was rough for them. This year's been rough for them. Um, it's going to be a challenge going up against Clarkson, obviously, when you have a team with Maddie Sikorsky, Izzy Hadley, um, Emily Valencia. Um, it's going to be a tough task for Waterford Mott. And then on the other side, you got Avenue versus Pontiac. That winner taking on Waterford Kettering. Um, Waterford Kettering's had a star player, Michaela Holland. Um, but I think if there's a team that could be that could pull off an upset, it's Avenue. Because you have Reagan Lawrence, you have um Savannah Schmidt, both seniors. Um, you know, I, Avenue has been hot and cold this year. They've been hot. I've been, I mean, like, and then when you're going up against the team, um, yeah, they've been hot and cold this year. So, here, Coach Roy Christman, um, you know, you, 
you've you've had some good wins, but you had some real questionable losses. Um, but if there's a team that's dangerous, it's Avondale because of the experience. They should beat Pontiac. Um, and I think they're going to give water for Kettering a game. I really do think they will give him a game. Um, I'm curious to see how Waterford Kettering matches up with Savannah Schmidt in the um in the um at the guards matchup. Obviously, with Reagan Lawrence um getting a lot of the attention. Um, so we'll take a look at that. I mean, I think when you look at that matchup, um, if Waterford Kettering, they got some players that can match up. I mean, Irene Schuff's gonna have to be a a player in this game. Um. I think they got others as well that they've really got to step up. I mean, Amelia, I mean, like, they got a very good big as well. I mean, Waterford Kettering does. So I'm curious to see how they do if they play Avondale. So that's something to really watch for. But when I look at this district as a whole, um, I just don't think anybody's touching Clarkson. I mean, I just don't think out of all those four teams that are in that district, I just don't think anybody's touching Clarkson. I'd be shocked if somebody did or give him a scare, but I just think Clarkson's got too much experience, played a tougher schedule. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. Um, District 5 at Lake Orion. This one's going to be very interesting. Um, you got Lake Orion versus Adams. That winner's taking on Stony Creek. And then you have Romeo versus Utica Eisenhower, and that winner's taking on Rochester. When I look at this district, and I see teams that have, I mean, like, with three teams with 14 wins or higher in this district, that says a lot. Um, when you look at, obviously, Stony Creek, they, they played a tough schedule. Um, you look at Lake Orion, Lake Orient's played a tough schedule. Rochester has played a tough schedule as well. The fact that those two teams, Lake Orient and Rochester, are battling for the white title, you know, heading in the final week of the year, that says a lot. Um, now, with Lake Orient, to me, Lake Orient should have... If, if the, if the, this is where I think the NPR gods have really screwed a team over. If you're Stony Creek, and you're going to be... And you get the bye... And then you're likely seeing Lake, or possibly seeing Lake Orion in the um, semifinal, and then seeing Rochester in the um, in the um, district final. If you're Coach Kellen James, oh my goodness, oh my goodness! And that Lake Orion game for Stony Creek, that's not an easy game for you. So when you really look at this um, this side of the draw, you know the three top. I mean, like you have Lake Orion as your A team in this district. Going up against Adams. Adams, Adams, we know they've been putting a win streak together. Um, so if you're Stony Creek, this it's scary. It's it's if you're coming, James, it's scary. You know, I mean, like just imagining it. You know, seeing Lake Orion, and if you get by them, possibly seeing Rochester. Now, if you're Rochester, you know you might you got a dangerous match with Lumen Utica Eisenhower because Utica Eisenhower is a team that's been hot and cold this year. I mean, they got some playmakers too on that team. So if you're Rochester, I know you had two, you had the um, two freshman towers and Alice Mack and Kylie Robinson, but they haven't experienced the postseason yet. So that's something that's um, if you're Coach Bill Thurston, you know that's going to be something to really keep an eye on. Um, but when you look at this district, I mean, like I think there's three teams that got a great chance to win this district. When you look at Stony Creek, Rochester, and Lake Orion. They got three, they got, I mean, like, they all three of them are more than capable of winning this district. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, both, all three teams are well coached. I mean, they, um, they know how to, they, all three coaches, um, when you look at, um, Kellen James, Bill Thurston, and Bob Bridges, they know how to put their teams in play, in the best place to succeed. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting district. Um. Not only from a player matchup, but also from a coaching matchup. Um, it's going to be a fun district over at Lake Orion. It's going to be a really, really fun district over there. Um, and then the last not but not least, the district over at Davison. You got um, 
You got Flint Kersley taking on um, Lapeer. That winner's taking on Davison. And then you have um, Oxford and Grand Blank. This for the second straight year. Um, if you're Coach Rachel Breyer in Oxford, um, and you're looking at this district, and I mean, like, you got to be hating the NPR if you're Rachel Breyer. I mean, you're the B team in this district, and you have to play, you have to rematch against Grand Blank. Grand Blank is loaded this year. They've got a ton of talent. Um, you know, they've added they've added some pieces this offseason. Um, Oxford, you know, with them, obviously you got Miranda Winemco, you got a very young nucleus with Allison Huffsetter, Sophia Rob, and um Nevea Wood. Um But playing Grand Blank first, that's gonna be tough for you. That's gonna be difficult for you. Um, it's the second straight year that you're playing them in the postseason. Um, it's going to be a really, really difficult task for Coach Rachel Byron and that team. Um, just to see, this to see Grand Blank, the top seed in the district. And then on the other side, you got Flint Kersley and Lapierre going at, going at it. That winner taking on Davison. I've seen Flint Kersley play I have not been impressed with them. I, I mean, like, they got some dribble drivers who are pretty good, but interior game's the question mark for me when I look at Flint Kersley. Um, Lapierre, we know they've been through a lot this year. Um, and then Davison, obviously, we know they, they're a talented team. Um, home court matters. Um, I think they're going to have a time... Um, you know, I think Davison could have a time if they get Flint Kersley. Um but um but they could they could spoil some things. Um on the flip side for Oxford, um going up against Grand Blank, it's gonna be very difficult, obviously. I mean it's it, it's not easy. I mean, you know, for them. I mean, I know with everything they've been through, um I mean, then to see Grand Blank, it would be like a, it would be a classic, it would be like a classic fairy tale ending if they win the um, district. Um, if they upset Grand Blank, it would be a classic fairy tale if they can win that district. Do I think Oscar's got a chance at this district? Yes, they do. Um, but, but I, I just don't see it. I mean, to be honest, with you, I just don't see it, especially with Grand Blank. Um, Grand Blank rolling right now, playing really good basketball. Um, it's going to be a tough task for Oxford going up against um, going up against Grand Blank. Um, they're going to have to really play well in that game if they're going to if they want to pull off the upset. Um, now I, they got a shot at it, but they're going to have to play really well though. Um, so that's something to really really keep an eye on as we head into the. Um, Girls basketball districts. So those are the girls basketball districts. They're on my blog. Um, if you want to take a look at my early thoughts on them, they're on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there in that situation um, going forward for the girls basketball postseason. Um, the red, we got, we still got we, the red has been basically wrapped up by West Bloomfield. Um, the white division is going to come down between Lake Orion and Rochester. Um, Rochester's got a difficult, interesting matchup on Tuesday with Bloomfield Hills. Lake Orion's got to go to Ian Smith Gym. That's going to be really interesting. If both those teams win, it sets up, um, a Thursday showdown between the two for a league title. Um, Lake Orion, if they, if they win over Rochester, would share it with Rochester. Um, and then in the blue division, it's going to come down to Seaholm versus Harper Woods on Thursday. Um, when he, Seahome versus Harper Woods on Thursday. Um, Seahome making that travel to Wayne County. Um, so really, when you look at that matchup here, um, Seahome beat Harper Woods earlier in the year um, at Seahome in overtime. And now they get to go into Wayne County. Um, it'll be a good indicator where both teams are at heading in the postseason. Um, even though Seahome's got the tougher road than Harper Woods. So we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, Boys basketball, obviously, right now, when you look at the um, league races, obviously, um, 
When you look at the red, it's Ferndale right now. They lead the red right now. Um, Lake Orient leads the white. I mean, over they got a tough match with Bloomberg Troy on Friday. Um, they lead Blue Bay Hills and Groves by a game right now. Um, the blue division, Seaholm leads that division. Um, especially with how how much the struggles they've been going through. Um, in the gold division, Royal Oak leads that division. Um, Royal Oak right now has proven to me that they are right now the best team in that division. Um, even though Harper Woods will have a say, I think, but Royal Oak right now, um, with the way they've been playing, um, probably to me, they're the best team in that division right now in the, um, gold. Um, of course I have my top 10 rankings this week. Um, you want to take a look at my top 10. They're on my blog at, um, Saginaw Bay 4650 at com. Um, the top 23 for both boys and girls. I released a weekly column on that. Um, so something to really keep an eye on. Um, some interesting games coming up this week. Um, Gary curious to see. Um, obviously, Clarkson Adams will be very interesting. Um, curious to see if Clarkson have Keegan Wasilic back for that one. Um, Lake Orion Troy on um, Friday. That'll be really interesting. Um, you got North Farmington and Ferndale on Tuesday, and then you got um, North Farmington Adams on Friday. That'll be some really good basketball to see what happens there. Um, and then, of course, you have um, a lot of good basketball still to be played in the um, final stretches of the season. Of course, the NPR for the boys will be um, released on um, Sunday. The matchups, um, the bracket came out. Um, I will post a link on the blog at um saying it'll be forty six fifty at blogspot dot com if you want to look at the bracket how it's done. Um, I will post a link on that um on the top twenty three. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward as we head into the final weeks of the um basketball season. March is here. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, a lot to look at, obviously. Um, as we head into the season, so. You know, so when you look at, obviously, we've had cheerleading districts, we've had hockey, we've had hockey regional start this week. Um, you know, we had cheerleading um, districts come out. Um, I mean, I haven't looked at the standings yet. I'm pretty busy. So we'll see what happens um, going forward there. Um, for a sign off here, um, you know, we'll see what happens and going forward. Um, hope we have my co-host Ian Locke back next week. So we'll see what happens. All right, now I'm going to sign off here. Um, Take care. Wish best of luck. Stay healthy, everybody. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, see you next week, everybody. Take care and God bless, everybody. See you next week.